What's up guys, this is Ryan Sims. Thank you so much for attending this virtual workshop for Imaging USA. I'd like to shout out a huge thank you to Paul C. Buff for sponsoring this video. So today we're gonna to be talking about long exposure portrait photography. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, so let's just get straight into it, shall we? All right, so we have got our lovely model, Allie. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so we've got our, uh, we've got a five light setup. So we've got four link uh, 800 watt flash units and we've got one Einstein here in the back. My Einstein is just my little hot spot that I've got here on this V flat. So we've got uh, a teal color gel on that. It's just gonna create a little bit of separation from the background. So we've got our main light right here with a nice foldable uh, silver beauty dish. Uh, really, really nice. Our fill light right here with a uh, teal color gel, uh, about half the power, uh, kind of going up right here. So main light here, got fill light coming from below. Got our nice two side lights here with a nice uh, strip box. And uh, we're gonna start playing around with some light painting tools. Uh, and a lot of these tools are relatively cheap and inexpensive. You can find them online. Uh, literally, I just Googled light painting tools and bought whatever popped up. So you've got uh, a little, we've got Mark here, who's gonna be our awesome uh, ninja in uh, black here because he's gonna be moving around and um, because it's long exposure, he's gonna be invisible literally. So he really is gonna be a ninja today. And so we've got this nice little uh, plexiglass uh, light painting tool. It's gonna create some really cool waves of light. Uh, and as you can see, if you kind of take this apart real quick, all this is, is just a normal small flashlight. And then we've kind of just uh, rigged it together with black duct tape. You do what you gotta do, right? Uh, with this right here. And so we just shove that back in here and this is our setup. And so, hey, if it works, it works. And so this is gonna be our setup, our light painting tool. And literally there's all kinds of things that you can use. I mean, you could use your cell phone, you could use a flashlight, you could use, um, we've got little LED strips. There's all kinds of things that we may show some examples of later. Uh, but I really love the effect that that uh, plexiglass tool uses. Um, so let's start getting into it. Uh, I think what we're gonna do first, I've got my camera settings. Uh, first off, I'm shooting with a uh, Canon 5D Mark III. I've got my 70 to 200 millimeter lens on here. Uh, settings are currently at F6.3 and uh, shutter speed at uh, 10 seconds. Um, that's gonna fluctuate probably as we go throughout, but really I just wanted to kind of get a nice exposure on the model here. And then uh, as we start going about this process, the shutter speed may change a little bit. And there's a couple of things you might wanna consider uh, as you're doing long exposure um, portrait work. Uh, first off, we're gonna be turning the lights on and off quite a bit. And so you'll hear me say house lights on, house lights off uh, quite a lot because we need to be in a controlled environment. So the room needs to be completely dark in order for this to work and to work well. So we're tethered over here. So we're gonna see all the cool stuff. You can see we've already been playing around quite a bit, try to get the look that we want. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just gonna start doing this and explain it as I go. So, let's do this. All right. So, if I can, oh, you're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get a little bit of fan action going. Awesome. So, if I can, I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, the house lights off, please. And I'm gonna explain this while we're in the dark. Woo! So, it's also good to have a little, an extra flashlight with you because I'm gonna need some type of light source to be able to focus on the model uh, while we're in the dark. Now, I don't have to do it in the dark. I'm just really just doing this to, uh, you know, be a little extra. <laughs> but uh, we always wanna make sure that, of course, we're focused on the model, and then, of course, we start our uh, photography uh, long exposure process. So, let's go ahead. We've got her in her pose here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off. 10 seconds on the clock. Mark, if you can, I'm gonna have yeah, you go ahead and... Back here on oh, okay, cool. Here we go, and 10 seconds on the clock starting now. Awesome. So let's check that out real quick, see what we've got. Ooh, very cool. All right, so as you can tell, we've got a lot of really cool light wave action going on right here. Now it's important to know, uh, can we go ahead and get the uh, house lights on real quick? Thank you so much. 
All right, so as we're looking at that first image, just kind of going wild and crazy with it. Now, there might be a little bit more uh, method to the madness in just a moment that we'll kind of talk about. But as we look at those light waves, it's important to know that the faster you go with your light painting, um, the less the exposure of the light's gonna happen. So if you go real fast, it's gonna be less exposure, but the slower you go, actually, uh, so sorry, can we go ahead and get the fan off real quick too? You may be able to hear me, you may not be able to hear me, but I'm gonna play it safe. Um, so the faster you go with the light painting mov uh, movement, uh, the less that exposure is going to be of that actual effect. But if you go slower, you're going to get a lot more of that effect. So just keep that in mind as you're playing around. So it's fun. It's fun to play in the dark, right? It didn't sound right, but whatever. All right, cool. So let's, <laughs> let's try this again. Uh, this time, what I think I'm going to do is because I'm just making sure I don't see the fill light stand in the shot. And I may just slightly zoom in a tiny bit so I don't get that little crease that I see off to the side in the V-flat. So I'm going to go ahead and I may just go ahead and get it focused on her now so I don't have to use my flashlight, but very good. I like that. Hold right there just for a moment. Can we go ahead and get the uh, house lights off, please? Awesome. Here we go. 10 seconds on the clock. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and get that fan on as well. Thank you so much. This is why I have assistance to help me out. <laughs> All right, here we go, 10 seconds on the clock, starting now. Very cool, let's check that out. See what we've got going on here. Awesome, and we can get the house lights back up. So as we're looking at that image, we can tell that because there's a lot of fast movement going on, we don't really see it as much and uh, you see it kind of towards the end where it got a little bit slower there. That's why that bottom right part is a little bit more predominant. So again, this is a learning curve. It's a learning curve for most of us. E every time that we've done this, it, you kind of feel like it's a little bit new, of, new experiment. So don't be afraid to fail, you know? Don't be afraid to try it. Um, you know, uh, again, it, it's just a fun um, trial and error process. And so that's what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna kinda of come right over here. Mark, I'm gonna have you follow me real quick. So if we come right here by Ali, I'm gonna get really close for a second. <laughs> so if we're right here, I think what we might try to do is just kinda of go a little bit slower and I might start counting out loud as well, the 10 second uh, mark, that way yeah, we know. Great. But we're gonna kinda of keep it around her body just a little bit. We, we can maybe go in front just a little bit like this, but just kinda of get it to where it's a little bit more predominant, so. Let's try that one more time, or 50 more times. <laughs> All right, so it is, it is, but it's a fun one. I like it. Let's go ahead and get those house lights off for me pretty please. I'm gonna get it focused on you real quick. There we go. If you don't mind, I might have you scoot just a tiny bit to your right, but not much. There we go, hold that. Gonna get it focused on you. All right, here we go. 10 seconds on the clock. Actually, go ahead and scoot in just a little bit closer for me if you don't mind, Mark. Here we go. And three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Awesome. Ooh, fun. I like that a lot. There we go. How you feeling? Good. Easy breezy? Yeah. Nice. Sorry to get it dialed in. Yeah, yeah. So as you can tell, just by just by this process alone, uh, going through this trial and error process, you can see from the last shot when we're going really fast how those light exposure waves are, are very soft. Now they're a lot more predominant because we're kind of taking it a little bit slower. And so really at this point, it's just a matter of <laughs> the flick of the wrist, <laughs> you know, how you move your wrist, how you move your hands and how you kind of choose to paint. Now there's all kinds of things that you can do. We can go in front, we can go behind, creating some depth. Uh, we can add in other lights if we want to. I think we're gonna keep this set up just for a little bit longer and then we may have an outfit change and try a couple more uh, different um, lighting and color gels and things like that. So uh, let's try a couple more shots. You don't necessarily have to have the, four, uh, the five light setup that we have. I'm personally choosing to do that. If you want to go with uh, no hot spot on the back and just keep it all completely black, that would look good as well. And even if you just have the main and the fill, uh, I think that would be enough to still create the, the effect and make it look good. 
and I may have already mentioned this before, but I, I think it's an important detail to have whoever is gonna be your assistant, this is definitely not a one person job. It could be a one person job if you wanna be the one to you know, uh, click the shutter and then run over and do it yourself. You can do that. You may have to put more than 10 seconds on the clock to do that. Um, as long as you're in a light controlled room, you should be able to do six seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Uh, it all just kind of depends on your setup. We're um, at Studio 615 in Nashville and it's, you know, we're in a nice big room, but it's pretty light controlled. And so we definitely want to uh, keep it as pitch black as humanly possible. Um, but uh, I think it's an important detail. Mark, if you come over real quick. Uh, Mark is pretty much wearing all black and all. That, again, makes him more ninja, which we totally want. But it's important to know, like, we've got him with um, black gloves on because even your skin uh, will reflect the light. And so, hey, that could create some cool effects or it could be something that's unwanted, but it's just a detail that you might want to consider as you're doing that. And again, because we're dragging the shutter, if he stays really, really still, you're going to see like this black shadowy figure behind the model. And we don't necessarily want that for the shot. So as long as he's moving, then he's practically invisible. So into Mark, everyone. Um, it is important to, uh, to know that if I didn't already explain this before, when you're in the dark, the flash is what freezes the action. So Allie could run and jump across, you know what I mean? Like a speed action type thing. If you're in the dark, the flash freezes it. Um, so at that point with the shutter dragging set to 10 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever, whatever ambient light that is in the background, that is what is actually making the trailing effect Apologize, apologize if I didn't explain that before. But so the flash is gonna freeze the action. So I think it's important that you nail the pose first. You got your lighting the way you want it. Um, you take that shot and then of course, whatever effect that you wanna do, uh, you, you can do that with your, your light painting tool. In a moment, we'll do uh, an outfit change, maybe change some of the color gels, do a little bit different setup, and I'll explain another cool way that we can uh, use long exposure uh, to create some really awesome effects. All right, so here we are. We have our second look, again, with our beautiful model, Ali. Say hello. And uh, so the setup for the most part is pretty much the same. We still have the same setup with the, the main light, fill light, uh, side lights, and our little um, uh, background hotspot lights. The only uh, difference is that I've slightly turned down the power on our Einstein that's flashing on our background. And for the side lights, we're actually turning the modeling light on uh, for both of those. So uh, when we turn the house lights off, you're gonna see the, the, the pink lights kind of outlining uh, alley. And what we're actually gonna do is I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and just through um, human error, just through kind of holding it and having a little bit of hand motion, uh, we can get some really cool lines and, and shapes with long exposure. And I have changed my settings a little bit uh, just to uh, achieve that effect. So instead of like 10, 15, 20 seconds, we're gonna go a lot shorter this time because we don't need a long exposure with me moving my camera everywhere. So we're gonna bring it to like two seconds. So we're uh, dragging our shutter for about two seconds. Uh, I've cranked up the um, f-stop to about f8, uh, just to allow a little bit more detail and so it's not so bright um, on the exposure on, on her face from the main light. And so, and there's really all kinds of cool things and I'll explain it as we go through and do this process, but as you're holding the camera, if you go down, the lines will go up. And again, this is from the highlights that we're gonna be getting from the side of Alley. And so the lines will go up. If you held your camera, bring your camera up, the lines are gonna go down, you can go left, right. We can create all kinds of designs. So I'm gonna show you that just to kind of give you an example of what we're gonna do. But we should have a lot of fun. I've got a little blue gel on this fill light just to uh, kind of fill in the shadows here with a nice blue color gel. Uh, had purple, but it kind of got lost in these colors here. So something that's a little bit contrasting to the uh, to the pink gels, but we should have a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, a lot of trial and error and experimentation, but uh, we're gonna talk about it as we go along. So here we go. Let's turn these house lights off real quick. All right, so I'm gonna take my camera off the tripod and 
The good thing is, is now that we have the side lights on, I can actually focus on her without using the flashlight. And so for two seconds, I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot and just slightly drag my camera down. And as you see, you get a little bit of that motion blur from this first image, that looks awesome. I love it. And so as you can see, I'm gonna move the mouse here. By dragging the camera down, you actually see these little lines. And you can kind of see it almost looks like, you know, her highlight, well, because it is her highlight. <laughs> but uh, like the elbows are right here. Got the highlights from her head right here. And it creates a really cool ghosting type effect. And it's really fun. So that's what happens when I shoot and I drag it down. So this time I'm gonna take my camera and I'm going to move it up as I shoot. So I'm just barely sliding my camera up. And this is the effect that we get here. So as you can see this time, the effect goes downwards. And so you can even see a little bit of her highlight here coming into the dress. Uh, and so that's what it's like when we move it down. And so this time we can actually do the same thing and I'll just show you what it looks like if we move it left, move it right, maybe move it in circles. So hold it right there for a second, Allie, here we go. I'm gonna move my camera to the left, just a little bit. And, oh, and you know what? Okay, this is good, to, just to show you. I mean, obviously for usable purposes it's not, but it lets you know that if, if I move it too far to the left, we're actually gonna pick up the modeling light and that's going to really affect the shot pretty strongly. So this time I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm just not gonna move it too far and get the modeling lamp in the shot. So let's just do it like this. Let's go ahead and get her in focus. I'm gonna shoot and I'm just gonna barely move it to the left so that doesn't happen. There we go. And see now you see when I move the camera left, this highlight goes right and you get this effect right here. And we'll do the same thing this time. We'll do it to the other side kind of playing around with the different effects. There we go, hold that just for a moment. Gently dragging my, uh, dragging my uh, camera to the right. You can see the effect goes to the left here. So again, this is the beauty of long exposure portrait photography is the fact that we can really just kind of play around. Um, and when you kind of have the parameters of, uh, or the guidelines of um, uh, what you're gonna be doing when you've got your, your lights set, uh, you can really just kind of experiment um, and have fun with it. It's all uh, trial and error. Um, it, you get some really cool effects when you also zoom in and out. So let me just show you a couple examples of that real quick as well. Let me turn these house lights back off. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop Allie the way that I want her to be. Again, the first shot, right when the lights flash, that's what the shot's actually gonna be than anything that's left over uh, it's just going to be capturing uh, the ambient light or the modeling light as we uh, go through this process. So I'm going to go ahead and flash, barely zoom out a little bit because I don't want to get the modeling lights in the shot. And let me try that again. I bet I can do that a little bit better. See, I might try it this time and actually zoom in instead of zoom out. I'm just kind of slowly doing it. So it might pick up. So you see, you get a little bit this, of this zoom effect. Uh, I'm gonna try that again, and I think that's gonna be a little bit better. It's almost like you got uh, devil horns right now. <laughs> I know, devil horns for the ice princess. <laughs> All right, let's try this one more time. I'm gonna zoom out just a tiny bit and zoom in slightly faster just to see what effect we get when we do that. It's really cool. You get, so you get some interesting effects when we do this. Let me try that one more time. zoomed in, there we go. See, I really like this because it's a lot more predominant. You can see the effect. And, and, and obviously I zoomed out a little bit, but the beautiful thing is now that we have the effect pretty strong, we can always crop in and uh, really just zoom in on all that, all that goodness, all that pink and blue goodness that's in the shot. So um, let me turn the house lights back on just for a moment. <laughs> so, I mean, again, we're all just ha kind of having fun with it, and, and that's the beautiful thing about this, is that it's, just, it's fun. Um, don't be afraid uh, to go overboard with some things. Uh, again, it's a fun trial and error process, so if, as long as you're in a light-controlled room where it's completely dark, um, 
and then uh, you've got whatever color gels you want to try and play with. You don't have to have color gels, but I do think it creates a lot of nice, uh, you know, texture, contrast, uh, and it's just, just beautiful to look at. Um, but really, you can kind of do whatever you want and just kind of experiment and play around with it. And, uh, and that's what we're about to do. So let's take a series of shots and just see the fun stuff we come up with. But it's also really cool if you have a tripod, uh, you can always just kind of tilt it down and get like super straight lines. If you've got a tripod that allows you to rotate your camera, you can do that as well and create all kinds of really cool effects. So, cool. <laughs> So for this uh, last look, we're just gonna play around and do some experimentation. Uh, we've got this fun set of LED lights. Uh, Mark, where'd you get those? Amazon. Amazon, <laughs> yeah. Found them for real cheap on Amazon. They're full RGB, they can change to pretty much any color. So uh, we're gonna do this uh, blue and red-ish type of look. What we've done is I've changed the fill light. Uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. I've changed this uh, backlight, this back spot uh, to red. So you're gonna have a little red hot spot on the background. My fill light has a blue gel, this deep uh, royal blue looking color <laughs> for the fill light. And then we've still got our main light on. So those are gonna be uh, our set. We're just using three lights this time. And uh, we're gonna play around with the shutter speed. Might be like six to eight seconds or so. Um, F stops around F8, but again, we're just getting our proper exposure. So you could be at F8, you could be at really whatever F-stop, as long as you've got your exposure where you want it. Uh, and since we're in a pitch black dark room, shutter speed is just gonna be enough to capture the effect. So I think it's around eight seconds. I'm gonna have, the, I'm gonna have Madeline and Mark, our assistants, wave their little LED ribbons and we're gonna create a really cool, psychedelic, just laser light show, awesome effect. And it uh, should be a lot of fun, so yeah. Let's play around and have some fun. There's not a whole lot left to explain in this section. We're basically applying the same techniques like fast versus slow movement with the LED strips and playing with different shutter speeds. I just wanted to show you another example with a different light painting tool. So I hope you guys found this educational and found it fun. Um, I know I did. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, it's just don't be afraid to play around with the lights. Don't be afraid to play around with your exposure. Really experiment with the color gel. See what works for you. It seems really intimidating uh, when you see all these really cool lights and all this you know, fancy gear, but it really doesn't have to be. It's really just easy and, uh, and just have fun with it. So uh, be sure to uh, follow Paul C. Buff. Uh, they're on all the social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and follow me as well, Ryan Sims Photography. Um, enjoy the rest of your time at Imaging USA and uh, hope to see you soon.